Family annihilators are not uncommon. In the case of the Beaver family, the two eldest brothers carried out a familicide of shocking proportions. Termed the Broken Arrow killings, Michael and Robert brutally murdered all but two members of their family in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, on July 22, 2015. Robert Beaver, 18 years old at the time of the murders, and younger brother Michael Beaver, 16 at the time, plotted to execute their entire family for years. The pair was obsessed with serial killers and wanted to gain fame and notoriety by carrying out a mass execution. Many familial murders go unsolved, but the brothers confessed everything to the police, mostly to achieve publicity for their crimes. Based on the boys' behavior, the Beaver family didn't have any idea what lay in store on the evening of July 22, 2015, because it seemed like any other night at the Beaver household, family members were susceptible to Michael and Robert's traps. When their 13-year-old sister Crystal walked by their room, they told her they wanted to show her something on the computer. Crystal entered and went towards where Michael was sitting. Then, without warning, Robert grabbed her, covered her mouth, and cut her throat. She screamed, and other family members came running into the room. Michael and Robert cut Crystal's throat in their bedroom. However, the cut wasn't fatal. Crystal screamed and ran to warn the rest of the family about the attack. The boys stabbed their mother, who came to help Crystal, over 40 times. Michael and Robert eventually executed her with blunt force trauma. The brothers then stabbed their father over 50 times, their 12-year-old brother nine times, then their 7-year-old brother six times, and their 5-year-old sister 18 times, mostly in the neck. In the end, they'd executed five family members and seriously injured another. Fortunately, their 12-year-old brother Daniel was able to call 911. He told the operator, My brother's attacking my family and reportedly said to someone, please don't murder me. A deeper male voice said, hello, and the operator heard screaming and crying before the line went dead. Despite how quickly and mercilessly the boys killed, there were two survivors. The first family member the boys attacked, Crystal Beaver, lived. Although her brothers cut her throat, she managed to run outside where she passed out on the front lawn. Her brothers assumed she was dead and dragged her back inside so they could dismember her along with the rest of the family. She recalled hearing her younger siblings screaming inside the house. She played dead until she heard an officer break down the front door and then they carried her to safety. She quickly identified her brothers as the perpetrators. The other survivor was a two-year-old girl, their youngest sister. According to the boys, they intended to cut off the toddler's head with an axe but they didn't have time before they had to flee. She was completely unharmed, and she stayed safe in a room upstairs. Once captured by law enforcement, the boys admitted they intended to dismember their family and put them in the attic. They would then grab their ammo and weapons and steal the family car. They planned to go on a mass shooting spree in as many locations as possible. Robert and Michael planned to go to different cities outside of Oklahoma and kill people in each one. Their goal was to execute as many as 100 people. Although the attack happened seemingly without warning, it was not a spur-of-the-moment decision. Robert planned to execute his family since he was only 13 years old. It wasn't until years later he discovered his younger brother Michael also had a preoccupation with murder. The pair openly talked about admiring mass executions and killing their family. Their sister Crystal, who survived the attack, said she reported the behavior to the sibling's mother, but wrote it off as boys being boys. The boys often stayed up late at night talking, and once they both realized they were both interested in murder, they began to formulate a plan. They originally wanted to attack in September, but moved their timeline to July when they felt they were fully prepared to start killing. Robert's trial was fairly straightforward. Initially, both boys pleaded not guilty and were tried as adults. But eventually, Robert changed his plea to guilty and accepted life imprisonment without the possibility of parole in September 2016. He is now serving this time. Because Michael was 16 at the time of the killing, there was some debate over how he should be tried. The courts eventually decided to try him as an adult the defense arguing insanity 
and Michael saw numerous mental health professionals. Police mishandled some evidence, which made his trial even more difficult. One hard drive that contained evidence was lost, and Crystal's diary, which allegedly contained details of abuse in the household, ended up in an auction house. Several pages were missing from the journal. On May 11, 2018, the jury found Michael guilty and recommended a life sentence with the possibility of parole.